Why do the poor make so many poor decisions? The poor borrow more, save less, smoke more, exercise less, drink more, and eat less healthily. The underlying assumption is the same: there's something wrong with them. And to be honest, this was what I thought for a long time. It was only a few years ago that I discovered that everything I thought I knew about poverty was wrong. It all started when I accidentally stumbled upon a paper by a few American psychologists, and it was an experiment with sugarcane farmers. You should know that these farmers collect about 60 percent of their annual income all at once, right after the harvest, and this means that they're relatively poor one part of the year, and rich the other. And the researchers asked them to do an IQ test before and after the harvest. The farmers scored much worse on the test before the harvest. The effects of living in poverty, it turns out, correspond to losing 14 points of IQ. It turns out that people behave differently when they perceive a thing to be scarce, and what that thing is doesn't much matter, whether it's not enough time, money, or food. Poverty is not a lack of character. Poverty is a lack of cash. The big question is, of course, what can be done? And it's an incredibly simple idea. Basic. Income guarantee. It's a monthly grant, enough to pay for your basic needs: food, shelter, education. It's completely unconditional, so no one's going to tell you what you have to do for it, and no one's going to tell you what you have to do with it. The basic income is not a favor, but a right. And its proponents have spent the spectrum from the left to the right, from the civil rights campaigner Martin Luther King to the economist Milton Friedman. I stumbled upon the story of a town that had done it, had actually eradicated poverty. This story starts in Dauphin, Canada. In 1974, everybody in this small town was guaranteed a basic income, ensuring that no one fell below the poverty line. The people in Dauphin had not only become richer but also smarter and healthier. The school performance of kids improved substantially. The hospitalization rate decreased 8.5 percent. Domestic violence incidents were down, as were mental health complaints, and people didn't quit their jobs. Similar results have since been found in countless other experiments around the globe, from the U.S. to India. But let's talk about the elephant in the room: How could we ever afford a basic income guarantee? What they did in Dauphin is they financed it with a negative income tax, and this means that your income is topped up as soon as you fall below the poverty line. And in that scenario, according to our economists' best estimates, for a net cost of 175 billion. A quarter of U.S. military spending, one percent of GDP, you could lift all impoverished Americans above the poverty line. Basic income is so much more than just another policy. It is also a complete rethink of what work actually is, and in that sense, it will not only free the poor, but also the rest of us. It's like Brad Pitt says in Fight Club: "Too often we're working jobs we hate so we can buy shit we don't need." I believe in a future where the point of education is not to prepare you for another useless job, but for a life well lived. I believe in a future where an existence without poverty is not a privilege, but a right we all deserve.